Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to Show It Better. My name is Steven and in this video we're going to see how to create and combine two different methods of architectural representation like sketch and diagram. So let's start. Okay, so um, I, I, uh, I wanted to work with my thesis model again. It's my undergraduate thesis. 3D model, which is more like an urbanistic project, and I wanted to, I wanted to create a series of diagrams or maybe a diagram that was like very very clean. But the problem with this 3D model is that first of all, with with the polygon that it has, the way we modeled it back then, it it looks weird, right? So if I just render everything out, it looks weird. It has a weird shape. It's not like regular. It's not like a perfect square, a perfect tri uh, rectangle. So first of all, what I wanted to do was when I wanted to polish it out all out and basically just clean up the model. And one of the most uh, important tools and the fastest tools was the Zorro uh, Slice tool. So that this is a SketchUp extension. I think many of you may know him by now, but if you guys don't, you can go to the extension warehouse in SketchUp and download it. And when you download it, you can basically create a section just like you create in any uh, SketchUp uh, program. And then you right click on top of the section plane and select the Sora Slice option. What that is going to do is that it's going to erase everything that's going, it's going to cut and erase everything that's not in the view of the, of the representation. So as soon as we create our section slices, what I'm going to do, what I did was just slice the whole project into perfect, into a, like a perfect rectangle. And I wanted, uh, I wanted only the, the important things to be visible, right? So that's the main project. And yeah, it's still just like a perfect rectangle. Uh, the next step after, you know, creating this whole, these whole slices, was to first of all, you know, reorient the model because it was oriented in a in a in a weird way, and also create a like extrude a base for the image. So this you guys will see in the future why why it's so important. But basically, create a rectangle that's the same dimensions of of the whole floor and extrude it. Uh, below right so you can extrude it uh, proportionally to the scale of the image as you guys can see here I extruded it uh, not so much but enough that you guys can see it and, and it would be notorious in the image and finally what we did was create a large large larger rectangle uh, which was going to serve as a base for our shadows when we rendered our uh, ambient occlusion rendering we could see, you know, there was a place where the shadows could fall onto and, you know, be seen. Because if we don't do this space, then, you know, there, there aren't going to be any, like, background shadows. So after we cleaned up the model and have everything in place, what we need to do is uh, open our V-Ray uh, Asset Editor. And we are going to render in... A, a, an ambient occlusion rendering with uh, the render ID channel, with the material ID, and with the shadow ID option. So you want everything in here to be uh, overwritten by the material. If you guys uh, have any doubts on how to, you know, create a material override uh, option, it's you, you can just ask me. But it's very very easy. You just open the the, the asset editor. And turn the material override option on. Also, you want the sun of the size of the sun, the size multiplier to be in about uh, 100, so it can, doesn't have to be that soft. But it's not uh, the shadows aren't that hard as e either. After this, you want to override or turn the can be overridden option for the base uh, the base plane, which we colored in gray, and Finally, we are going to select the 
render output. I did this in a very, very big size because I wanted it to be, you know, if we can just, if you wanted to print it out in a very big size or uh, if you wanted it to uh, get a close up, if you're in a digital portfolio, then you would be able to retrieve a lot of information. After, before we render our image also, uh, I wanted to add much more detail to the image. So I went to the 3D warehouse and I started downloading uh, a car. I downloaded a very low poly car and I started copying it and pasting it all around the 3D model. Now, sometimes, you know, this is not very, very notorious, but it's just those little details that are, uh, you know, give the image much, you know, much more interesting, much more texture, depth, whatever you want to call it. So as soon as we have our our image set up, I recommend you guys save the scene because you don't know if you, if uh, you, we have to go back to the scene or adjust it. So you go you go to animation and save the scene. And after you adjust the size and the render channels, you want to start rendering. So this was the basic render that we had. And what we're going to do is we're going to import these renders into Photoshop. We're going to import the base render and we're going to import the different uh, render channels that we ex they imported it with it. I recommend that you guys always, obviously always organize this into different folders so everything can be very, very organized. The first thing that we're going to do is I rendered my, my shadows as well. So what I did was uh, press control I to invert my shadows and set my shadows to to multiply so this way you can, you can control the hardness of your shadow so maybe I set it to a 20 to 30 percent opacity so it it's not that hard but it's uh, a little bit relevant and I went back to my SketchUp model and I exported the line so you can just go to hidden lines mode and export it as a PNG file and then adjust it in your Photoshop file with the other base render right and you also want to set this file to multiply so the white background can be you know erased and you can just have the lines after we do this I'm going to start applying some texture into the image so we're going to go to textures.com this is a very very awesome page for you guys uh, to download any type of texture and it can be used, used for 3d programs for 3d you know rendering illustrations and also diagrams so i use it for everything so i, I started looking for a road texture because i wanted to, uh, to detail much more on the urban side of the image so i downloaded an urban texture and once i imported it into photoshop i rasterized the image by right clicking on on top of the layer and saying rasterize image rasterize layer now we're going to duplicate this layer and with the clone stamp tool I'm just gonna erase anything that is gonna make it look like it's a, a very it's like not a seamless image so I just I want it to look much much more seamless so I started pasting uh, various parts of these roads together and I started with Ctrl T, I uh, transformed it and applied it to the road of my image. Now the cool thing about this is that since we are in an at cinematic projection, uh, you know, one of the streets we you guys can use it and uh, use it in all the streets that are uh, directed in the same uh, way, if that makes any sense. So. What I did was just use the same street I had uh, transformed for the main street and just copied and pasted it. And then I did the same thing with the other streets that are facing in the other direction. And I just copied and pasted all of these streets. After I did all this, I put all of them, I grouped all of them in one folder. Then I went to my render ID options and selected only the road. and. With this selection made, you know, this selection is made with the color range, uh, you can go back to the folder of your whole uh, textures and just mask it out, right? So we didn't delete anything. 
you know all the images all the images are still there but we just mask them out so it's a non-destructive method after we did this we we're going to set our road folder uh, texture to multiply and we are going to import another texture this is a texture that i got from spoongraphics.com and it's a free texture you guys can go and download it if you want it's a concrete texture so i am going to adjust these this concrete texture for it to be the base of the whole uh of the whole diagram per se and so i created two i copied this texture two times and again the same with the roads right so i just copied it i put them in one folder then i went to my render id and i masked out uh, everything else so only the the things with these textures would be visible and then i set it to multiply mode and finally we're going to repeat the same process with another different concrete texture that we're going to put like in the in the pedestrian paths and everything else of the diagram So after we do this, remember that if we lower the, line, the the opacity of the line file, or we just have it in zero, it looks like a like a mix between a, a a diagram, a nicely rendered model, and a physical model. Since you know the concrete texture is so uh, it's at a very high resolution, it looks very very nice. And finally, what you can do, obviously, to make this image more analytical, if you want to analyze, if you're doing an urban analysis or if you're doing a, something of your project, you can just, with the render ID uh, channel, select the main building. Right here, I did this because you couldn't really distinguish what was the proposal and what was the context. So I just uh, select the main, main building and created a new layer, set it to multiply and color started coloring it right so i wanted to color it yellow because i thought you know yellow was an interesting color and after that what i did was just add a paper texture to the background of the image so this is pretty much the same same process you just you know duplicate the whole image and then mask it out and set it to multiply. So here I set it to divide so we can see the imperfections of the texture uh, like inverted. And the final step uh, that we are going to do is that we're going to mix this diagram technique, which for some people, if you guys like it like this, you know, you can just leave it as it is. It looks very clean, it looks very nice. But I think sometimes the images look uh, much, much nicer or for example, for us, architectural images look much nicer when there's a degree of analysis and there's a, a sense that uh, you know the the image was uh, like dissected and taken down and maybe proposed and maybe scribbled upon. So some sometimes these scribbles in some images they just look much much more interesting and give the image like a a sense of hey you know sometimes someone is was really thinking about uh, this image was really thinking about the proposal they were doing or maybe they're very serious about doing certain stuff so i think that in this context these scribbles these sketches really fit in so in my personal case i made these uh sketches on top of my diagram with my tablet but if you don't have a tablet don't worry what I recommend is that you guys print out your, you know, print out a small, like a, a letter size diagram. And on top of that diagram in a transparent paper, you can sketch out, you know, what you want uh, to to emphasize. If there are going to be trees, there are going to be people, any specific annotations, size annotations or uh, anything that's important to the image. And then you scan that transparent paper and import it into Photoshop and by pressing Control I, all your lines are going to be white or they're going to be black depending on how you drew them. So as you guys are starting to see, these images starting to look very, very interesting because you know the mix between this, this perfect clean uh, diagram and this very much like sketchy look of an architect uh, on top of this, it's starting to look interesting, right? So 
obviously I did this for the sake of this image, but the the goal is that you just don't scribble for scribbling sake. That the goal is that you really uh, sketch out important things for the image, right? So you want to sketch out things that uh, the image by itself is not telling you. So for example, I rendered, I sketched out a profile, I sketched out, you know, the continuation of the street, I sketched, I sketched out the trees, how they were going to be, the scale they were going to be, the size of the people, the you know, the name of some important streets or some important, some important areas. And that was basically it. So here you guys can, can get very, very creative and start deciding, right? So if I want to do different layers of analysis, you know, I can do some analysis with my sketch paper and others with, uh, you know, the diagram. So I think this was a very, very interesting tool, which I think I'm going to use much, much more in my diagrams, my illustrations, and my whole architectural presentation in the future. I really, really like this. And I really hope you guys like this as well. Remember that this uh, whole uh, video or the, this whole project took about an hour, an hour more, more or less. So if you want to have access to that full hour narrated and to that Photoshop file, you guys can go to our Patreon page and download it. All, all access and plus you will have access to all the previous videos and all the previous files. So I really hope you guys liked this video and thank you guys for watching. <laughs>